Hey guys, Mr. Kennedy here. Got another Onshape video for you this morning. Last video we played with some of the intro tools in Onshape to make this cube here. Um, and this morning I want to work you through some of the next steps that you can use to start making some better stuff. So let's just jump into a different environment here. Now in years gone past I've created this tutorial here which is a step-by-step Onshape -step on tutorial in PDF form which will step you through using the tools uh, basically to make this silly little train. It works you through a whole bunch of stuff, assembling different parts together, using different uh, 3D step creation methods like extrude and, and stuff like that, and a bunch more of the basic sketch tools and pattern features and things like that. Um, now this was for an older version of Onshape, so I will share this in the description and you're welcome to refer to it if you want to. You're welcome to use it for yourself and share it around with, with other people, that's fine, but just beware that it was made in 2016 and some of the tools tools and features in Onshape may have changed since then. So I'm going to be stepping you through a similar thing in Onshape here today to make a similar sort of thing <clears throat> and learn the same kind of tools. But yeah, it'll be compared to that PDF version. Some of the stuff might be a little bit different. Let's chuck it over here so I can refer to it if I forget things. Now, we made this cube last time. I don't mind whether you want to manipulate this cube or whether you want to start a new part. Just a reminder that you can just click on your logo here to go back to a new screen and then at any time you can just hit on create document to make yourself a new file. We could call this whatever we want to call it. I'm going to call it train YouTube tutorial. Give it a few seconds to create and it loads you up into a new environment here. Now, pretty much the first things that we want to do are very similar to what we did in the last video, to pretty much just start by making a, uh, a, rectang a rectangular prism, or whatever you call it. So I'm just going to start a new sketch here. I'm going to draw myself a rectangle. You'll notice just there I swapped from corner rectangle to center point rectangle. And you'll remember in the first tutorial I showed you how to use the dimension tool to position a rectangle a specific distance away from the origin point. By using center point rectangle instead, you can start by clicking on the origin point and it will center your rectangle out from that origin point. And now I don't need to position the distance away from it because I've already told on shape that the center of my rectangle has to be attached to the origin point. So as I use my dimension tool here to change the size of it, it always stays centered around that point and it's already fully black here and fully defined without me having to set distances away from things. It doesn't really matter what sizes you choose here. Your train can end up looking a little bit different. That's cool. But um, I'm just going to try and follow the same sort of basic steps that I've used in my PDF. And once you've drawn that rectangle, we're just going to use the extrude tool and make that a rectangular prism. Now, this is pretty much the same as where we got up to last time in that we jumped in the program. We learned some of the basic tools and we turned this into a 3D shape. Now, the next thing we want to do is we're going to use the same sketch tool and the same extrude tool to cut off a section of this. So if we do another sketch now, and again it's asking you for a sketch plane, it's important to note that the surface you draw your sketch on doesn't have to be one of these three original planes that were provided to us when we jumped into the program. It can be any flat surface of any shape that you're working on. In this case I'm going to draw it on the side of this rectangle. And so you can see now I've got another plane here, which you can't really see, and that's a surface here. It says sketch two. That's where I'm drawing this sketch on, and it's actually in line with the side of my rectangular prism here. I'm drawing my new sketch on this flat surface. I've got my same sketch tools up here. This time um, I'm going to use the same rectangle. Uh, I'm going to use the corner rectangle, not the center point, because I want to attach to. Now remember, sorry, pause. Remember you can change the view of your sketch to the surface you're looking at either by clicking on a face on the cube up here or by right clicking and choosing view normal to sketch plane. So I'm using my corner rectangle, not the center point one, because I don't want this to be centered around an origin. I want it to be, I want it to be aligned with this corner and come in like this might be worth noting at this point that if you do this and you slide your mouse over and you'll see at this point how my origin point has turned orange and there's that dotted line coming up to where my cursor is with that little vertical line there. What that's about to do is if I click right now, it's going to create a constraint to say that the right hand side of my rectangle must attach to 
being vertical with the origin point. And I actually don't want that in this case. So what you're always best to do when you're creating a shape, if you've got a dimension in mind and you know how big you want it, make it way too big on purpose or way too small on purpose and intentionally just avoid connecting this to other stuff because that will stuff you up in a minute when you try to add dimensions. So for example, if I click on there to attach it, then I grab my dimension tool and try and change the, th the width of this. It stuffs up, sketch could not be solved and things go red. That's because I've got a definition here where it told I told it that it had to line up with the origin and I've tried to change the dimension and that won't work. So in that case, we could delete that dimension and it solves it, but I don't want it to be that width. So I'm just gonna undo and I'm going to place my rectangle here really small and then use my dimension tool to set this to the dimensions that I want. I might make that 30 wide and in this case just to learn a bit of a new tool remember that we can use the dimension tool to set distance between two things so instead of just saying how high this is I can actually use my dimension tool to set the distance from this line to the bottom of this rectangle and I can set the gap here instead and I'm gonna make that something random I'll, I might just choose 10 no that's too small maybe we'll go So I can just double click on that dimension at any time to change it. You wouldn't ever come and place another dimension because now you're telling it that the gap here is 13 millimeters, but the gap here is also 12 millimeters and it can't solve that. It'll stuff up. You only ever want to have one and to change it, you just double click on it and you can punch in a new number. I'm going to go with maybe 13. Okay, now I'm finished with that sketch, so I'm going to hit the tick button to exit. And now I want to use the extrude tool. And in, in this box where I want to choose the sketch region that I'm going to extrude, I'm going to choose that rectangle. The default setting is to extrude it and add on another 3D body coming out here. And you can do that if that's what you wanted to do, um, based on whatever shape you're making. But in this case, I want to cut it off. So I'm going to change here. You need to make sure this stays as a solid model. Don't ever go to surface until you sort of know what that means. And you can choose here whether you want to make this a new part. So now it's not adding onto my original part, it's making a new one and it comes up in the list down here as a separate part. And you'll know that that's what's happening when it shows as a different color. Or you can choose add and you can see it's telling it to merge with part one, which was my initial 3D body. Or I can tell it that I want to remove this part or remove this surface away from part one. Now in this case, that's what I want to do and I want it to go all the way through. So you can grab this arrow and just drag it to a certain distance. You can punch a number in here to tell it exactly how far you want to go. But in this case where I want it to go the entire way through, what I'd suggest, I mean, yes, you can just drag this further and that will be fine. But if I later on wanted to change the size of the body here and I made it thicker than 37 millimeters, um, this cut would only cut in 37 millimeters. And once you've got a series of heaps and heaps of steps here, that can become really confusing. So what you might want to do instead is change this. Instead of telling it to cut blindly in one direction by 37.4 millimeters and just hope that that's all the way through, you can actually change from blind here to through all. And then what it will do is no matter how big this, the width of our initial body is, it will cut all the way through that. And hit tick, and now we've got that section missing there. The next thing that I'm going to do on this train is I'm going to create some little wheel arcs where we can, you know, cut out space here for where the wheels are going to go in. So we can use our sketch tool. Again, I'm going to do another sketch on the side of my train and spin my view to the side here so that it's positioned well. You can press down your scroll wheel to pan this around, by the way, and I'm just using my right click to navigate my camera around. And if that gets confusing and you kind of get lost at any point, you can just click on a view on your view box here to spin back. Um, and notice that when I, when you scroll your wheel up and down to zoom in and out, it does that from wherever your cursor is. So if I put my mouse up here and zoom out, it slowly moves the object to that point. And then same when you zoom in, it zooms on wherever the mouse is. So I could, you know, zoom out this way and then zoom in over there. You know, you, you have a play with that and you'll learn it. Anyway, let's make these wheel arcs. So I'm going to make a. I'm going to use the circle tool here. There are a number of different circle creation methods. Center point circle is definitely the easiest and the one that you'll use the most. There's also ellipse here where you can make ovals by setting the two different dimensions. But in this case, I'm going to use center point circle. I'm going to lock the center onto this bottom line and just create a random sized circle here. And then I'm going to use the dimension tool to tell it that I want this to be 
I can't remember what I did before, let's just make this up, maybe uh, an 18 millimeter circle, that looks pretty good. Now the other thing that you can do, so if I want a second one at the back now, yes, I can just use the circle tool and create another one, that's fine, but we're in the interest of learning more tools here. So I want to show you the linear pattern tool. If you click on linear pattern, what it's going to do now is you can choose a thing, so if I click on this circle, it's going to start patterning it. A whole bunch of stuff just popped up on the screen. So let me explain this little bit by little bit. First of all, you'll notice on my mouse, there's a little image of a mouse, and the left click button has a green tick in it. If you've got a low powered computer, that might not show up, but the same thing will exist, you know, it's, it's the same function whether you get that icon or not. Now, what that means is if I left click right now, it will apply this pattern. There you go. Now, some of these parameters are wrong, so I'm going to undo that, and we're going to do it again, and I'll teach you what all of this other stuff means. The first thing that you'll see is you've got these two arrows. There's one here going to the right, there's one here going upwards, and they both have an, uh, a numeral with a multiplier after it. So this one is one times, and this one is three times. What that means is, in the up and down direction, it's patterning my circle only one time. So you only get one circle. If I was to double click on that and change it to two times, and then I just hit enter or tab to, to apply that, you can see now it's patterning it two times in the upwards direction. In this case, I only want one. <coughs> and you can see that my multiplier this way is three times, but I only want two wheels. So I'll change that to a two. And then the next thing you can do is to set the distance between these two center points of these wheels. Now you could grab this arrow and drag it, that's fine. Um, or you could do a bit of maths to, to you know, calculate some stuff here. So for example, I know that my train, I think I set it to 50 millimeters long. Um, and if I was going to use my dimension tool here to say that this circle is exactly 12 millimeters away from the back and now I want to know that you know you could do some math to figure out well if there's 12 millimeters from the back here how long is going to be left between these so if we have in fact we can type this as an equation into the next thing because it's too hard basket can't be bothered thinking about it in my head so I only want to make this two so I could say here now I know my train is 50 millimeters wide and I want to take away the 12 mils in front of the first wheel and the 12 mils behind the back wheel so I want to go minus 12 minus 12 and there's there you go it was 26 millimeters and that should give you okay no so my maths is wrong there whatever you could play around with that to get this correct obviously my train probably wasn't 50 wide, perhaps it was 55. That looks better, it must have been 55 wide and I could go back to my first sketch to check that. Um, or in fact at any point you can turn on, uh, if you right click on a sketch you can tell it to show dimensions somehow. Uh, perhaps they've moved that. There's a way that you can you can look at the dimensions of your first sketch and, and refer to that, but anyway. Um, that will do. I'm going to apply that and there's my two circles ready to go. Now I can accept out of that and when I choose my extrude tool what I want to do now is just choose these two top segments and tell it to remove those to a depth of whatever you like. I'm going to choose maybe five millimeters in and that's that. <clears throat> Now the last thing that I want to introduce you to quickly in this video before it gets too long is how I can mirror these two wheel arcs now to the other side of my train. Very easy to do if you've done everything correctly. So if, if you set your train correctly to be centered around this middle plane, this front plane goes straight through the center of the train, this becomes really, really easy to do. If you haven't done that, in a minute I'll show you how to fix it. There's a mirror tool up the top here, so to do this mirror we want to click on the mirror tool and there's an important setting here that we have to pay attention to. By default the mirror tool wants to take my entire part and duplicate it and mirror it across a certain surface. But I don't want to do that. I just want to mirror one of my features. I want to mirror extrude 3. So we have to change this tool from a part mirror to a feature mirror. It's very easy to miss that, and if you miss it, this won't work. So you need to change that. Now I need to tell it, what are the features that I want to mirror? In this case, it's extrude 3. And now I need to tell it what the mirror plane is. In this case, the plane that I'm going to mirror across is this surface that goes through the center of the train, and there they are. I like to explain this as a little analogy to get you to understand it, is imagine you're standing in the bathroom brushing your teeth, and you've got the piece of glass that's in between, smack bang, right in the middle of the real you, 
which is my extrude on this side is the real extrude and then there's my piece of glass my mirror surface and then the fake you brushing your teeth in the mirror is the same distance away from the glass but on the other side so this is my fake extrude or my mirrored extrude that exists on the other side so if you like here's me brushing my teeth here's my piece of glass and here's the fake me brushing my teeth over on this side. The reason that's important is because what I can do now is, because this is my real extrude, I can come back to my extrude here and make changes to this. So I could change that to 10. And because it's a mirror, it will update those settings and the fake me on the other side of the mirror will do exactly the same thing. And that's an advantage over doing it with a mirror tool rather than just, uh, you know, coming and doing this again. And that also works because I've, within the sketch where I drew my circles, I did this as a pattern. If I change the diameter of this one circle, not only does it update the back wheel there, but that will also now apply to the two on the other side. And so that's pretty cool to be able to use the pattern tool and the mirror tool. So now I've kind of got this one master wheel arc that, create, uh, that controls the other three. Now, if you don't have this plane going through the center, so let's say right back at the beginning when you did your very first extrude, or, you know, when you first created your body, it wasn't centered over that plane. What you can actually do before you do this mirror tool, so I've just un undid, I've undoed to get rid of that. What you can do is you can create a new plane here. And what this will do is you can choose a surface and it will give you a new plane a certain distance away from that surface. And you control that by dra dragging the arrow or entering in a number here. What you can do, this is almost like doing a blind extrude where you just punch a distance in. The other thing you can do is you can tell it we want to do a mid plane. And what you need to do now is choose two surfaces and it will create a new plane exactly in the center of those. So if I didn't have this, I'll just switch that off. Let's pretend that didn't exist. I could say new plane, this tool here, that looks just like a, a flat surface. And I need to choose two surfaces here, the left-hand side of my train and the right-hand side of my train. And it will give you a new plane that's exactly down the center. And now when you do your mirror, I change this to a feature mirror, tell it that I want to mirror my extrude. And now I've got to click in this box to choose my, where my mirror plane is. And you can choose your new plane that you've just created, either by clicking it here or by clicking it here. And that will do the same thing. It's just a quick solution if you didn't center your objects correctly back in the beginning. Anyway, that's enough for this video. We'll move on to another one in a minute, uh, but that should give you quite a bit to work through there. We learned how to cut things. We learned how to use the pattern tool and the mirror tool and how to create planes, as well as use some other dimension tools and stuff. So that's a pretty good effort for one of these videos. And I'll see you guys in the next one.